Hello friends of YouTube, welcome back to Mike Reads the World. On tonight, a full moon at the end of March, I've decided it would be fun to do a little trilogy of short novellas with some loosely connected themes, one intentional and one unintentional. Uh, these books are, and I've, I've read them over the past three days, uh, um, and one I'm actually still finishing tonight, and hopefully I'll be able to finish it tonight after uh, doing the videos for the first two. Um, we have Carlos Fuentes Aura, Daniel Mengara's Mema from Gabon, and Tula by Jurgis Kunchinas, I think that's how you pronounce it, from Lithuania. Uh, what connects all these three books? Well, besides the, the intentional thing was the names, uh, four letter woman's names. That is the only thing, but they turned out to be also unintentionally connected that they all have elements of sort of creepy folk tales, uh, horror, not really horror, but, uh, you know, some, some sort of spooky ambience and, uh, and, um, yeah, I guess it, it will emerge more as I, as I start to talk about it. And I, and I think the most obvious case is the first one I'm going to cover. Carlos Fuentes is obviously a famous Mexican author, um, part of the boom, the Latin American boom. And he wrote this in the 1960s. It's very much a spiritual successor to Pedro Paramo, a short novella that is open-ended in many ways, told in kind of an obtuse fashion. Um, and while for me it doesn't quite reach the heights of Pedro Paramo, it really is outstanding uh, as, a, as a long short story. I almost consider it more so than a novella. Uh, very, a lot of ambience. Oh, and the, the reason I'm counting him for Panama is because he was born in Panama City. That is the only reason. I just couldn't I didn't find another author that uh, from Panama that intrigued me as much as reading this one, and I already have a few for Mexico, so I slotted him in for Panama. Um, don't be mad at me for uh, you know if you're from Mexico and and you know I'm I know Carlos Fuentes is really an important figure, so um, it's a bilingual edition by the way. So uh, if you get this one, <clears throat> so this is great for English or Spanish speakers. Um, I don't know. It seems like the best of both worlds. I found it a little bit hard to get used to at the beginning. Um, the fact that English is on one page and Spanish is on the other. Uh, it just kind of, it's, it's not how you're used to reading. But once you get over that, I think, uh, which isn't that hard, I think um, you'll find that this is a very, uh, a book that you can't put down until you finish. You can probably read it in one to two hours. Uh, that's about how long it took me. Um, I'm kind of purposely dancing around what it's about because almost anything you say about such a short atmospheric um, novella with a lot of intrigue, mystery, and, and gothic horror at the heart is going to be something of a spoiler. But since it's told in uh, second person, let me give you an idea and you adopt the same sort of style. You are a young historian looking for work. You see an ad in the paper that um, is asking for a historian to write, to help finish the memoirs of a, of a deceased important figure. I believe he was a colonel uh, or something like that, an important figure in, in history. And uh, so you go, you, you respond to this ad, you go to the house and you meet there an uh, older woman, and, and she's in this bedroom with candles uh, lining the walls, and it's all dark. It's the house is practically falling down. It's practically in ruins. Um, the, the patio is covered, um, <clears throat> like the interior patio that should be open is covered, in, and it's just sort of almost like this dark space where, where this vegetation is growing and you really end this you get the feeling in entering this house right away of something isn't quite right here and um this old woman lives with a with a young woman named aura where the name of the book comes from and she awakens your passions and so 
uh, you set about writing the memoirs of this famous figure who is the deceased um, spouse of the older woman who welcomed you into the house, who has a rabbit. Um, there are some mentions of cats and rats, and uh, that'll come back later when we talk about the uh, the bat that's on the cover of Tula. It's a, There were a lot of crazy connections between these books, even though they're on different continents, you know, uh, America, Africa, and Europe. Um, and there's even a connection to in uh, in Mema here, um, I think. So it's it's a it's very much yeah very atmospheric book. That's about all I can say without uh, without giving spoilers. And um, I did want to add though I I looked up a interview with Carlos Fuentes, the author of uh, Aura. Um, and my translation from Spanish of what he said in that interview is. Um, is he was writing it at the same time as The Death of Artemio Cruz, um, which is a book where death is disguised as life, and Aura is a book where life is disguised as death. So now I'm very curious to read uh, La Muerte de, Arte de Artemio Cruz uh, to see if that is the case, uh, or if I can make connections, that sort of connection between the books, because it's, yeah, things are left open to interpretation, and... Uh, and another thing I thought was interesting, this is only like a one minute and a half interview, but right away the interview asks him, um, he, he asks Carlos Fuentes, is you, the, the you as the second person, you know, narrator uh, saying you, is that an abstract you? Or who's, and he, he immediately says, no, no, it's el tu más concreto. It's the most specific you. And uh, you who has the book in your hands, you who is uh, the spectator looking at Las Meninas by Diego Vasquez. Vasquez. Uh, if, you have, if you're not familiar with that painting, I recommend look up Las Meninas by Diego Vasquez, and that gets across a very uh, good idea of what the feeling of reading this book is like, this sort of unsettling, you are the center of attention and you're not really sure why. Um, I'm not 100% convinced that this book wouldn't have been just as good had it been written in first-person narration, but I can at least say that since it was so short and atmospheric uh, and it didn't overstay its welcome and had some some really, like, wow moments that keeps you, or, like, what WTF moments, right? And you just keep, you want to keep reading. Uh, I have to say it was just... Um, you know, it didn't overstay its welcome, so the second person never became something that wore on me like it did in the book I read for Sri Lanka, for example. Um, and then I do, of course, like second person when it's used as uh, sparingly as part of the frame story where, say, the author is talking to the reader, but then most of the book is talking in first person, telling the reader their memories, um, like in... The Reluctant Fundamentalist uh, by Mohsin Hamid for Pakistan, or Posthumous Memoirs of Bras Cubas, which I read for Brazil, by, of course, by Machado de Assis, one of my favorite books. So, um, yeah, Carlos Fuentes, Aura, I definitely recommend it if you want some of that traditional, you know, Mexican horror, gothic, um, uh, you know, ghost story type of thing. Yeah. This is probably one of the best there is. And, <laughs> of course, when I searched on YouTube and, and found that Carlos Fuentes interview, this seems like a book, if, if you look at the audiobook versions, there's right away people commenting, like, uh, who's here Who's here for, uh, you know, because of, it was a science, for an assignment or whatever, right? So it's a book that probably is assigned in schools. I'm not sure if in the United States or, or Mexico or where, but, hey, I really enjoyed it. I really recommend it, uh, not being someone who was forced to read it for a class. And um, yeah, that will, uh, that will segue us nicely into the next book. I, I think these will be shorter, just they're, they're shorter books, and I don't want to give a lot away. I just, uh, I, I think this is a great uh, uh, trilogy of books. If you want just three short books from some, some you know, more obscure places and uh, 
authors that uh, may not get some attention. Obviously, Carlos Fuentes is well known, but these next two are going to be really interesting, I think. So let's move on to Mema by Daniel Mangara. Thank you. <laughs> 